Hello friends, this video on surface chemistry part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's understand some of the application of adsorption. The first one is the removal of coloring matter from the solution. As we have seen that this charcoal can easily remove color material. We have seen the dye, there is a methylene blue dye and then we put charcoal in this, it becomes colorless. The charcoal adsorbs all the solutes, the colored solutes, right? Same thing. In Industry is required sometimes the solution has a coloring material. For example, uh, the sugar solution, the raw sugar is uh, yellow, brown in color. You want to make it white. So there also charcoal is used. Right? So animal charcoal, charcoal actually they remove the color of solution by adsorbing the colored impurities. That is one case if you see. The moment you add charcoal, after some time it becomes almost uh, colorless. The second is the production of high vacuum. See, if you want to create really high vacuum, you can use a vacuum pump. Vacuum pump will remove some uh, air and it becomes uh, vacuum. But if you want to create really ultra high vacuum, then you can add some charcoal also. So charcoal will do what? Charcoal will remove the remaining trace of air. It's not that charcoal will create a very good high vacuum, but you can use vacuum pressure first, create the vacuum. But to reach the ultra, the last mine, right, to remove the, even the last traces of air, you can use charcoal. Charcoal will remove, charcoal will adsorb the last trace of air, which uh, you can actually, you know, for if you want to remove that from a vacuum pump, you need a very, very high quality vacuum pump. But you can either go for a low quality vacuum pump and use some charcoal, that itself will give you a very good high, high vacuum. The next is the gas mask. See, this gas mask is used by the coal mines worker because in the coal mines there are a lot of poison gas, right? They are gas like methane. So if they, they, have, they somehow inhale this methane, it is harmful for them. So these gas masks will have act activated charcoal. It will have some charcoal here, somewhere. So these activated charcoal will what do what? It will adsorb all methane, for example, here, right? It will adsorb all the methane from this. See, for example, I have oxygen and methane coming in. It will adsorb methane and only oxygen will be out. Right? Methane will be adsorbed in this mask. And the person is safe now. Because not only methane, there are so many poisonous gas. So in the coal mine, this has this charcoal, activated charcoal, activated charcoal is nothing but the finely divided charcoal. So, so that the surface area is more and it can adsorb more and more gas. That is used by the uh, workers, the gas mask, the, these coal mines workers. It is used to control humidity. I told the silica and the aluminium gel, they are used as adsorbent. And, and why? They remove all the moisture, all they remove the moistures and it controls humidity. So for example, you have a uh, electronic item, you want to store it or you want to package it. So it's good to have the silica gel inside so that it can adsorb all the moisture in the air inside the box and your electronic gadget or whatever is there is uh, safe, right? It won't get spoiled. It is also used to cure disease. It is used to kill germs. Why? Because this gets absorbed on the germs. Correct? For example, for cure of cancer, for curing cancer, this is used a lot. So for curing disease, what happens is this whole logic of adsorption. Certain poisonous chemicals are used as drugs and these drugs get absorbed on the germs, right? These germs, they absorb these chemicals in the diet, the germs die and thus the disease is cured. The cancer, as I told, is a good example. In the whole heterogeneous catalysis adsorption method, method is used, right? So in this adsorption of reactant on the solid surface of catalyst increases the rate of reaction. So we see we have this hydrogen, hydrogen gas will be adsorbed on the nickel surface, right? And this is hydrogenation actually. We use uh, some alkenes, alkynes, we use this nickel catalyst and hydrogen gas to do hydrogenation of unsaturated uh, hydrocarbon, right? So here if you see now, alkene has come and this breaks into hydrogen and you get 
alkane. This bond also, this bond which you are seeing here, this bond breaks, right? And you get alkanes. So this is also one good example, right? Vanaspati, ghi, two ghi, they do do those hydrogenation. There are also the adsorption principle is applied. It is used to separate inert gases. See, as I told, the physical adsorption that depends on the adsorbent and adsorbent, right? So for example, I have charcoal here, I have gas one and then gas two. It may happen that gas one has more tendency to get adsorbed and gas two has less tendency to get adsorbed. So you have a, a beaker or I have a jar which has both this gas, I want to separate it, it's very difficult to separate, right? What I can do is I can use this charcoal. Charcoal will absorb all this gas one and gas two it won't absorb. Since charcoal will adsorb all the gas one, you can take out the charcoal, put in another beaker, heat it. The moment you heat the charcoal in the uh, another beaker which has gas one already, the gas one will come out, right? If you heat this, the desorption process will take place, and with that you can actually separate the inert gases. So because they have different adsorption and different temperatures, so you can control all these parameters. I won't go into detail, but this is the logic of separating inert gases using the adsorption technique. The froth uh, flotation process. See, in this case also we use adsorption technique. Right? So here the low grade sulfide core is concentrated by separating it from the silica and other impurities by using pinol and frothing agent. Right? This, this froth which you have, you see, it has actually the sulfide ore. Is the pure sulfide ore. See what happens is this is my whole uh, impure or low grade sulfide ore, right? right? So, what I'm doing is you pass the air, you just mix it, you create froth, right? Some frothing agent is used and you, you create froth. Now, what happens is all these impurities will settle down, correct? And this froth will have highest pure sulfide ore because the, the sulfide ore get absorbed on this uh, froth and you can you collect the froth here and then give it some time the froth will settle down and you can easily get the sulfide ore back, the pure sulfide ore. Right? Very very common uh, process in the industrial froth flotation process. The next is adsorption indicators. See uh, surface of certain precipitates such as silver halide they have the property of absorbing some dyes, right? Like fluorescein, etc. So they produce special color or characteristic colors at their endpoint, and these are used actually to indicate what is the dye you are using, right? Because because this uh, what I'm talking about is my surface, right? So these surface produce specific color based on different adsorbate. Right, I have an adsor adsorbent that is fixed, for example, silver halide. Silver chloride, I can say. So this silver chloride, now when you, you, you want to test, no, you, you have something called eosin and you have something called fluorescein, you want to say which one is what. Then you can use this uh, again adsorption technique. When eosin is adsorbed in the silver, it produces a different color. When fluorescein, fluorescein is adsorbed in this silver, it pro produces different color. So these are nothing but my adsorption indicator, silver chloride, for example. So it is used in that also. Right. The next is chromatographic analysis. So we have seen this a lot in the whole chromatography chapter where adsorption is used. In fact, the adsorption is the basis of um, chromatography. So if you want to know more about this, I will not explain. You can just watch my videos on chromatography where we explained how the whole thing works, how the adsorption techniques helps in purifying substance using chromatographic process. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.